begin in my own thinking with uh, the seeming and sometimes real contradiction between the word social and psychology, which is how I describe myself, because thinking about the social world and thinking about the psychological world tend to pull us in different directions. And I do very much see social psychology as a bridging point where we try to understand and reflect the experience of individuals and the influences upon them. But we also recognize that individuals live in relationships, children grow up very much in families, in peer groups, in uh, embedded in all kinds of social relations. And those social relations have their own uh, structures, uh, shape, traditions, conventions. Um, and then there is the larger um, societal level that we, we need to think about too. Uh, so those different traditions are very uh, important in my own thinking. And for me, that comes together in a whole series of concepts that I work with. The idea of the audience is individual and social or societal ideas about literacy. We can talk of literate individuals, but also um, a media literate society. Um, and the specific kind of research traditions that have fed into my thinking then, in addition to the psychological and the sociological logical, I would also add the tradition of cultural studies, mm. which brings into thinking about uh, media studies, um, uh, recognition of the importance of culture at all levels, and a political or critical perspective, mm. which always um, takes us beyond the thinking about um, uh, just a kind of descriptive or normative account of the um, of children and recognize also the imperative and the importance of, of possible points of change. My focus with regard to children on the internet is primarily the ways in which children get victimized uh, using technology. <laughs> and the traditions that have mostly informed my work have been from criminology. Mm -hmm. And because it's really looked at issues related to crime victimization and, and offending. It is an interesting question and not so easy to answer. My disciplinary home base is psychology. Um, reconsidering this uh, from today's perspective, uh, it is not any longer. Um, maybe I would uh, nominate myself as a communication researcher, maybe, um, but uh, this is kind of, of a tricky discipline. Um, I have become much more sociological um, over the years, um, but maybe I can describe the reasons for this development. The particular institutional context of our work at the Hans Bredo Institute is defined rather by phenomena than by disciplines. Um, so we do not have to provide teaching or a curriculum for students in psychology or so on. We are an independent research institute and we are interested in media and communication and how they change. Um, and we take the disciplines and the disciplinary perspectives that are needed in a particular historical and social uh, context. Therefore, I had the opportunity to work with colleagues from communication, psychology, sociology, education, uh, and last not least, uh, media law and media regulation, colleagues who are highly important for our institute. Um, as I said, in the last years, personally, I have been increasingly influenced, have been increasingly influenced by sociological concepts. While, as I think for many of us doing this kind of research, the methodological starting point of my research remains the individual, as a, that would be compatible with psychology, the theoretical framing and the way how we analyze and interpret our data is particularly interested in the social and societal implications. Therefore, I found sociological concepts increasingly relevant so I do not start my research from a coherent theoretical framework. Some people could call it somehow eclectic, for example, but rather from specific phenomena. Um, this is particularly important when you are in constant contact with stakeholders. They do not ask you for a theory. They ask you for a particular problem. Um, so our research in many cases is problem 
oriented. How can we protect children from a new particular uh, phenomenon in the media environment, for example? Um, and that is kind of uh, my position with regard to theory. Your question was, uh, which disciplines or traditions particularly influence me? Uh, insofar as I am interested in theory, I can say and have to say that I have been particularly influenced by the thorough theoretical work of my wife. So not at the Institute. I'm <clears throat> um, happy to uh, closely cooperate with Ingrid Paushasebrink. Um, and um, I can say that over the last years, this has been particularly important because she belongs to those who are able to and interested in developing a coherent theoretical framework. Um, it might have a complete expression or found a um, complete um, expression in a recent article in communication, the communications, the European Journal of Communication Research, uh, in which she outlined a theoretical framework to research the role of media within young people's socialization. She stresses that this requires an integrative approach that understands socialization as a contextual interlinked process in which children construct their approach to life against the background of developmental tasks and of the relevant social context. Um, and in order to meet these challenges, she has developed a praxeological approach that combines subject, subjective and structural components of practice. Uh, so I may say, if I would like to refer to one particularly influence, influential uh, theoretical work on me, that is exactly that from the same household, if I may say so. Well, that's an interesting question because I recently was asked to write a commentary on, um, on a monograph that's going to be coming out on the history of the direct effects model of media effects, going back to the pain fund studies in the 1920s in the United States, which looked at the effects of movies, which was the medium of the day on youth. And I realized that when I was first read those studies, they were had brought together the best social scientists of the day from a variety of disciplines, from economics, from sociology, from psychology. Um, and they um, demonstrated, if you read all of the volumes, that no one discipline has a surfeit, has a corner on understanding a phenomenon. And as a consequence of that, as I've been reflecting to write this commentary, I realized that those studies had a profound effect. I mean, not just because of their findings, but because of their approach to studying the same sort of phenomenon that I've been interested in studying. So what kinds of um, backgrounds do I use? I have collaborated with computer scientists to understand technology better. I've collaborated with sociologists, with developmental psychologists, with other people in communication technology, HCI, human computer interaction. I collaborate across disciplines to try to understand the phenomenon that I'm looking at. No one discipline has a corner on understanding a phenomenon completely. And I try to look across disciplines uh, that I think might be able to help me understand the, the policy questions, the public questions that I'm trying to pursue. As uh, an undergraduate and graduate student, I just fell in love with media studies. And one of the things that I love about media studies is that we sort of it's, it's a young field, so we get to be the, when it comes to theory, we can be the magpie of the academic world. We can sort of steal and borrow and adapt and adjust from all kinds of fields, uh, depending on what we need. We don't, we're not so confined, perhaps, as some of these very old school traditional disciplines. And I love that. I love the fact that we can gain insights into extremely specialized disciplines and we can see how it fits into our uh, way of thinking. You know? And as a media scholar, for me, it's all about context. So it's not about the individual or about the social or about the family or about the national, it's all about the full context. And that is something that you can do as a media scholar.
Yeah, I think I think I think feminist theory has been really critical to the ways that I think about the child as a subject. So really sort of thinking through that social constructivist lens um, to think about the ways that we interpolate children and, and demand particular performances from them. Um, but at the same time, you know, sort of thinking through the ways that children um, develop a sense of agency and push back against adult ways of thinking and, and enact their own forms of resistance. I think there are, um, yeah, I think, you know, I've, I've really sort of drawn heavily on, on a range of feminist theorists there um, to sort of develop that thinking. I think, you know, um, Judith Butler, for example, is, is, it was really foundational to some of the work that I did originally, um, you know, just thinking through the questions of subjectivity and, and so on. So, yeah, I'd say, um, I'd say that sort of feminist theories had a really strong influence. Um, but of course, you know, when you study digital media, um, it's such a it's such a, um, a, a rich subject area that that no one particular lens really sort of gives you all the tools that you might need to make sense of it. And so I think I've learnt in a very cultural studies kind of way to poach from different disciplines. So, you know, I could also easily cite someone like Walter Benjamin and his work around sort of the work of art in the age of technological reproducibility is a really key reference point for me in terms of thinking about the role of digital media in contemporary culture and see and understanding uh, I guess the evolution of those technologies um, simultaneously is a kind of a rupture of history, but also um, as characterized by deep continuities. I think in general, I have a tendency to try and situate things in their historical context. That's really, really important to me. Um, I think also, um, you know, I'm, I'm sensitized to questions about cultural specificity. I'm interested in exploring how different practices evolve in different contexts and settings and the rationale and logics that drive those. Um, I'm also really interested in, in you know, um, sort of thinking through ideas around the way that the future and temporality in general kind of impacts on, on the things we believe and the ways we enact in relation to children. Um, and, you know, and, and I think the future obviously is a really when you're talking about children, inevitably you have to grapple in some sense with, with the idea of the future. So I've also been interested in theories that sort of think about temporal logics of digital media. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, in, in short, I'm, I'm drawing on a very wide range of, of different theoretical inspirations. I really moved pretty rapidly from Shakespeare to Kali Minogue and uh, <laughs> Uh, and eventually on to Big Brother, where I got into a lot of trouble with the Australian media for comparing Big Brother with um, The Taming of the Shrew, uh, which uh, I, I thought was pretty convincing, but uh, not everybody thought the same. And so uh, I've, I've been interested in that aspect of media performance, like how does it connect with the big questions of uh, everyday life for whole populations in cultural circumstances, including love and marriage and death and lying and deceit and duplicity and self-advertisement and pride and arrogance. So all of those things are of great interest to children too. And uh, it's that that uh, centered my attention on these things. Later on, I got to know an area, a much more specialized area called cultural semiotics through the work of an Estonian stroke Russian uh, linguist and cultural theoretician called Yuri Lopman, and I'm proud to be a follower of Yuri Lopman, but not into the direction of strict formal semiotics and linguistics, much more following his uh, amazing idea of the semiosphere as the precondition for speaking any language. And um, one of the characteristics of the semiosphere is that there must be more than one language in relation to each other mutually untranslatable, maybe um, uh, incommensurable, two forms of sense making coming together and actually communication takes place out of that difference. So there's a different theory of meaning of language, of culture and of the um, importance of looking at whole systems, not just individual utterances. 
to understand how things work in the sphere of culture. It leads to theories of adaptation, change, evolution, and com complex systems in the abstract, but in the concrete practical uh, instance, it it's, allows you to ask the question of what role do children play in such systems? What role do children play in the creation and reproduction of language and culture and society? And the conjecture that I've always felt to be intuitively worth pursuing is that they play a decisive role, that children make culture. Mm -hmm.